Hello and welcome to the first video. This is Mr. Irvine. Um, I'm going to be showing you today how to access Google Classroom. Uh, some of you have been doing this for a while and some it's quite new. Um, what we'll talk about today is how to access Google Classroom from a PC or a laptop. Um, your Torbitai email address, um, what to do if you forget your password or if you've forgotten your password. Accessing Google Classroom from your smartphone. Um, joining a class and then viewing a knowledge organizer inside that class. Okay, so if you're using Google Classroom on a PC or a laptop, um, you're going to need to use a web browser. So I would recommend you use Google Chrome. Um, it is possible to access Google Classroom from most web browsers, but as Google Chrome and Google Classroom are made by the same people, they're highly compatible and you won't have many issues doing that. Uh, when you open up Google Chrome, um, you're going to want to go to Google, of course, and you want to search for Google Classroom. Um, once you search for Google Classroom, you'll see that there are obviously many results come up. Um, the website you're looking for is just called classroom.google.com. So that is something that you could alternatively just type in the address bar at the top. When you click on that link to classroom.google.com, it should take you to a sign in screen. Um, so in order to sign into Google Classroom, you're going to have to use your school email address. So it is no good using your personal email address at home because that won't be linked to our account in school and you won't see any of your classes. If it does take you straight into Google Classroom, then you're likely that you're already signed in using your home account and it may appear that there's no classes there. You'll have to manage the account and, and switch to your school account uh, and I'll show you how to do that in a couple of moments time. So you will be using your school email address to sign in and as I mentioned, so your school email address is comprised of your year that you joined in year seven or the year you would have joined in year seven if you joined us later on. Um, the current year seven is therefore would be 2020. Um, the G would be the initial of your first name. Uh, classroom here would indicate your surname. Um, so Fred Bloggs would be 2020 F Bloggs. And you add the at torbridge.net on the end of it. That creates your school email address. Now there are exceptions to this. Um, for example, if two students have the same name, uh, you're commonly given a, a slightly different uh, username and therefore email address. So if you have any issues regarding your school username or your school email address, you can follow the same instructions for changing your password which I'll talk to you about in a few minutes. Okay, so we're back into Chrome and we're gonna sign in using our email address. So we've got our 2020 G Classroom account to demonstrate with you. Um, when we press next, it asks for our password. Um, we're gonna sign in with our standard network password in school. And if you've forgotten that, I'm going to give you uh, some instructions in just a few minutes on how you can get it reset. Once we've typed our password and press next, if you have um, not signed into Google Classroom before, it's going to ask you to select either a student or a teacher, and you'll obviously select student. Um, and then the first page that you get that comes up here uh, will show you the classes that you've been invited to join. You'll be able to join them by clicking on the little blue join button. And this student here happens to have one class, an example class that's been set up by myself, and he's already joined that class. So it's worth saying at this point that it can get a little bit confusing if the computer that you're using already has someone signed in to a different Google account. For example, someone that checks their Gmail. So occasionally it will revert back to uh, their original accounts or you might well go straight into Google Classroom and you may see no classes here, um, but that's possibly because you're using either your personal email account, your personal Google account, or a member of your families who's signed into that computer. So in order to switch between the different Google accounts, you click up on the icon on the top right here, the little G. This one here is a G because the first initial of the name is Google. Um, so you click on that one and you can go to manage your accounts. Now in there, you may well then see that you've got your own personal email address here and you'd be able to add your school account. So you go to add another account and it will switch over to that. Once you've signed in with your username and password, it will come up here as one of your suggested ones. So here's my Google Classroom test account and that's my teacher account and I could switch between the two accounts by clicking on that one. If you've forgotten your password, we can reset it for you. If you're in school, just ask your tutor or a teacher. If you're at home, your parent or carer will email the following information to passwordchange at torbridge.net. So we need to know your student's full name, that's the first and surname, their year in school, and their username. Now, if you don't know the username, please add to this email um, your request and they will confirm the username along with a new password in the return email. Check your junk mail if you haven't received that one. Just remember that the email that they send uh, this request from has got to be the same email address that we have on our system. That's for data protection reasons so we can't be sending uh, new passwords out to people who we aren't sure is the parent or carer of the student. 
Right, so once you've joined a class or two, you can go into that class by just clicking on the name of the class and it will take you into the home page for that class. Now, there's, there's a couple of different sections you can look at here. So um, at the top, we've got our stream. This is the main page that you'll land on when you click on the class. Down uh, on the stream here, you, you've got all the information that the teacher has decided to post to you. So the teacher can give you information. They can give you links to websites, notices. Uh, they can put assignments on there, knowledge organizers um, and, and the quizzes and things like that. So if we have a little look at this one, we've got, um, we've got three assignments there already. The most recent one will usually be the one at the top or the one that the teacher wants you to do will be at the top. You can also access all of these through the classwork tab at the top here. Classwork tab, uh, it does occasionally come up with like helpful guides and information like this, so we can just say okay on that. Um, that, that they'll usually be separated by topics, make it slightly easier to navigate them. And you can see we've got some work to do here and the knowledge organizer that we can look at. The people tab shows you the other members of the class. Uh, most importantly here, it will show you the teachers so you'll be able to contact those as well. You can send them a message directly by clicking on that message there. If we go back to our stream then, I'm just gonna show you uh, what's on the stream uh, in this example class here. So I have uploaded the knowledge organizer to it. So if you wanted to view the knowledge organizer for that subject, you just click on it. When it opens up there, it will give you a bit of information and then you've got a, a full color, zoomable version of the knowledge organizer for that subject, which is very useful if, you're, uh, if you've lost yours, if it's at home or it's uh, got dropped in a puddle or something. Um, you can also print a copy off if you want to for home. I suggest you keep using it on the computer. Uh, if we go back, use the back button here. Um, and go back again, we can go back to our class. Um, we've also got, by the look of it, an assignment. We've got a quiz to do. And we've got an assignment there, a written assignment, which we're going to go over. So you may want to access Google Classroom from your phone, smartphone or a tablet. So you can do that, it's fine, it's really good, it works, it's portable, and um, you can access everything that you can on the computer, although obviously with a slightly smaller screen and without a keyboard and a mouse, some operations and tasks might be a little bit trickier. Um, so you can access it using Chrome or a different web browser on here, um, or, or the Google Classroom app. We're gonna use Google Meet a little bit later when we talk about how live lessons can be run so you can have the video stream from the school uh, from your teacher delivering a lesson. So we look at Chrome for a second. So if we click on Chrome, um, you would usually type in Google Classroom to, to, to search for Google Classroom, just like you do on the PC. And you can click on classroom.google.com and it will take you into the classroom. Now, if you haven't signed in yet, it'll ask you to sign in with a, an email and you're also gonna use your school email address for that. If it signs you straight in like this and you don't see any classes, the likelihood is that it signed you in using your personal account. And this is uh, most important for those people who have like Android phones where you've got to have a Google account on the phone. Um, so if you do log into Classroom and you can't see it, what you're gonna do is click on Try Another Account and you're then gonna change the account to your school account and you'll be able to see everything just as you saw it before. So uh, an easier way of accessing Classroom from your phone is to download the Classroom app. You can do this on any phone. It's on the App Store, it's on the Play Store, depending on what type of phone you've got. So all you do is you go into your, uh, indeed, the App Store, in, uh, sorry, the Play Store in this case, um, and you're gonna to wanna to search for Google Classroom. You'll see the little symbol there. Developer is Google, and you just need to install that one. So once you've installed the Classroom app, you can obviously click on it to open it. Um, you'll have to sign in the first time with your school email address, as you'd expect. And here's that same problem again, if you've got a Google or an Android phone, um, and you may well already have a Google account assigned to it, it may well go in as that. So if you don't see any classes, uh, you can click on the three little lines at the top left, little menu icon, and across the very top there, you've got to click on the email address that you can see, 2020 G Classroom, click on that and you'll be able to change it um, to your other accounts. You'll be able to change it to your school email account. Um, if we swipe back there so we can see the, uh, the homepage, the, the landing page there when you, when you go onto the, the app you can see that it's gonna list all of your classes in a very, very similar way um, to how it does on the PC. And you can just click on the class there and go in and have a look um, at all the assignments that you've been set. So just like before, if I clicked on, for example, the Knowledge Organizer, if I click on that one, and it will click to, to show me the instructions there, and then I can click on where it says Computer Science Knowledge Organizer, the PDF, I'll click on that, and that'll open up on the screen of your phone. So that gives you a much easier way, obviously you can zoom in and stuff, but it gives you a much easier way of using a knowledge organizer in full color, all zoomable, um, in case you've lost your other one or it's fallen in a puddle, et cetera, et cetera.